Uh, good morning. Um, my name's Lucy Barrett. I'm the client director here at Radio Centre. Um, this section was actually billed to be Mark Barber, who is our planning director at Radio Centre, and he's the kind of uh, father of all effectiveness data that we've sort of mentioned several times this morning, and he's the author of this report. But sadly, he can't be with us today. Um, he's a very vain person, actually, and I think he's still getting over the fact that 10 years ago when he came to Edinburgh to present in a feedback form, one person said, uh, I didn't like Mark Barber. <laughs> Sorry. And he's still going on about it now, so I think that's why he's not here. But anyways... So I'm going to be taking you through this research study, so bear with me. As I said, I'm not the author of it. Um, but before I dive into the detail of what we did, because it is a really interesting study, you know, we, we've heard from Lindsay about, um, about how the changing way radio is listening, and we do talk about there being an audio revolution, and I would say that the evolution of radio is at the heart of it. But actually, this piece of um, research looks at listeners and why they listen to commercial audio. So um, I'm just going to take you a little bit back in time to 2014. So this was actually before I started at Radio Centre. We did some research called Audio Now. Um, and it, it was kind of on the back of the kind of growth in on-demand audio uh, services that were, that were coming uh, very fast at that point. And we were being asked about it quite a lot. Um, and this study unearthed what we called six need states for listening. And they were broadly categorised in terms of whether the motivation for listening was personally or socially driven um, and content or listener context led. So um, it is always, by the way, important to note that these are not exclusive. People listen to these for many reasons and uh, they complement each other. But I'll be giving you some detail on the need stakes in a minute. But, you know, this was back in 2014. And actually... As we've also heard several times, uh, the smart speaker was not even around at that point. Uh, we didn't even see it coming, actually. You know, when it arrived, we are like, wow, it's a clever radio, as Matt said. But actually, it is around 40% penetration of UK households now have one of these very clever radios. And, um, and actually, the rise of the smartphone since 2014, that's now 9 out of 10 adults have access to audio services, you know, in their pocket or, you know, at the end of their arm. Um, so, you know, this makes the, it, people are able to access whatever they're doing now for audio. So um, looking beyond the progress in device penetration, um, again, we've heard this morning about how uh, COVID has changed everything, and uh, it has really changed everything. Uh, we did some research during COVID about how people would would people want to return back to the office and whether or not they liked listening to radio and we knew from that it was very uh, coming through very strong that radio was the perfect accompaniment to day to day uh, working but actually this latest research from Global it's their ongoing audience insider reveals that over half of employed adults are working from home at least one day a week or more. I mean, we actually downsized our office. We can't all get in there at once. We have to book in advance, but um, book in advance we do. Um, so considering these factors uh, in combination, it's clear that they've played a kind of significant role in the ongoing growth of total commercial audio listening as re measured by Rajar Midas. But it's actually listening hours have increased by over 20% in the last six years. So just to kind of reiterate, everything I'm going to talk about today is commercial audio, so commercial radio, non-BBC podcasts, and non-premium uh, service thing. It is only commercial I'm going to be talking about. And it's clear that the accessibility of this audio has grown significantly, and it's been mirrored with a shift in need stakes. Um, but we wondered how much of need stakes had changed. And, um, and so when we set about this, we, 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 we wanted to see if the need states had changed and were or evolved during that time. And um, we also wanted to kind of quantify the size of each and reveal the role of the different audio services within them. So we appointed Differentology, who I know someone else has already mentioned here. You did, didn't you, Val? Uh, so um, we, we worked with them before. They're a really great agency based in Newcastle. Um, and um, they, they kind of developed two new data sources for, for this, um, both with a weekly commercial audio listeners nationally represented, and that was matched against Rajar Midas. So the first was a kind of deep dive qual project, 
where they recruited, um, I think it was 20 listeners, to video themselves on their smartphones, recording their motivations behind each listening occasion across a whole week. And then this was used to explore how our 2014 need stakes had evolved, with the outputs also feeling in, feeding into the quant phase. And actually for that quant phase, we used a thousand commercial audio listeners who were recruited to fill in a seven day diary. Now I know there's a lot of information here, but Mark always kills me if I don't talk about the methodology, because I, I just say, hmm, it's research. But it is very, very important, because actually they got around 11,000 listening instances, and it re represented basically just under half a million minutes of commercial audio listening. So a very, very robust and credible data set. So that's how it was done. My bit for Mark's done. Um, what did we find out? Well, this was the big news. Um, a new need state, um, Keep Me Company. And it revealed the important role that audio plays in providing companionship and a human voice when people are on their own. Uh, you know, mostly, I suppose, uh, driven by the evolving post-pandemic working patterns. Um, this one, by, by the way, did not really appear in 2014. Uh, it was vaguely there, but not, not in any significant way. So, wow, what a change already we're seeing in under 10 years. So for this one, because it's new, you're going to get to hear what a listener says about this audio need state. If you listen to the radio station for so long, you feel like you're comfortable with them, you're your friend, they're speaking to you. You don't really get that from your Spotify's and your, and your Alexa's. I'm on my own, so it is quite quiet, so it's nice to have. It feels like you're in a room with other people and it livens up the atmosphere. There's something kind of special about it that I can't quite put my finger on, but I guess you feel part of something. When I'm working from home, that can be important. I'd rather listen to radio presenters talking about the day. Some of them can cheer you up. Be quite funny, they're quite quirky. Just keep me company while I'm doing jobs and entertaining this little monkey. So, as we heard, this needs to say is about providing companionship and a human voice. Um, when people are busy doing their own things, so, or, you know, yearning for the company of adults as in the case of the last lady, perhaps. When I look at that child, it reminds me of my eldest, how sweet he is, and little does she know what's coming down the road <laughs> in about 14 years' time. But as actually, as such, they, these, these listeners, they tend to be at home or in their car. They're working or studying or performing household chores, and actually, this is the only one that childcare played a significant role in as well. So, you know, audio seems to hit the spot actually in helping people keep company. As you can see from the mood profile up there, the prominent mood is happy, feel good and relaxed. Moving on. So this may have been a newly identified need state that we hadn't really looked at before, but it's the second largest now in terms of both the weekly reach and share of total audio listening on a weekly basis, with the average listening occasion is around 78 minutes. And um, it's no surprise to find that the presenter-led live radio is the dominant audio format for this need state, with both younger and older audiences, because it is something really only, that only radio can deliver. So I don't have time um, to go through each need stake. I'm sure you're devastated to hear. But they are on our website, and they are also available uh, on the report as well, which we do have some copies if you'd like to take uh, a, a real one home with you today. Um, so do check it out afterwards. But um, with just looking at this, a fuller exploration of need stakes reveals how the increase in overall audio listening is also being driven by the fact that different audio formats aren't actually competing with themselves, uh, competing with each other for share of it. They actually do play a complementary role. And we can't say this enough. People often say to us, yeah, but everyone's streaming now, aren't they? Or, you know, everyone's listening to podcasts. Uh, it really isn't that. The, it, the, the three can actually exist quite happily. 
And actually, the distinctive nature of live linear radio means that uh, it actually serves every single one of the need stakes, much more than podcasts and on-demand music services, and perhaps underpins why the medium continues to lead commercial audio listening habits. Now, based on those half a million commercial audio listening captured in the, the, the weekly task, we can see in this chart how live radio has the highest weekly reach by several multiples. Um, just on this chart, because I've been asked to, to catch up and I only have four minutes uh, left, I had to have this chart explained to me several times. But um, it, on this robust data set, we can see how live radio is also found to account for the greatest share of time spent listening within each need state. Sorry, just going back to that previous one, I should have pointed out the only one that radio did not come out top. It, it did very well, it was Broaden My Horizons. And that went to podcasts, even though it's actually the smallest of need stakes, so it's not, it does make sense that perhaps if you are wanting to kind of expand your knowledge on something or go into a much deeper dive on something, podcasts do well, but radio does do well on that, so yes. Um, and just going on with this, so this, this here, the bit that I need to explain is that the data is scaled in line with each need stakes share of total listening time, and the percentages are shown in black at the top. And radio share within each need state is highlighted in white. So I hope that's clear. And if it isn't, um, don't call me, call Mark Barber. <laughs> um, so in attaining the highest reach and share of listening within six of the seven audio need states, it's clear why live radio remains the most um, listened to form of audio entertainment at an overall level. And, you know, the Ray John Midas uh, data that we have quantifies how live radio continues to lead time spent across all adults and among younger audiences within this group. So when we look at the share of overall time spent listening to commercial audio and how it breaks down, the data reveals that it's primarily driven by context over content, with context-led occasions accounting for around 80% of weekly commercial audio listening time. And again, just to reiterate, they're not mutually exclusive concepts. Content naturally plays a vital role in context-led listening choices. But the net effect of this is that it means that audio entertainment provides advertisers with a multiple of opportunities to engage mass audiences at relevant moments and benefit from boosted advertising performance as well. And again, there's more information about this in the report. So this is kind of the, the sort of the key takeouts from the study. And having digested these, which I'll let you do very quickly, because I only have two minutes left, um, uh, uh, you might be wondering how the learning can be applied for day-to-day -day kind of planning things for advertisers. And we are asking people to be a bit more clever about the way they plan um, audio as a result of this. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways in which it can be put into practice. Now, the first one uh, is increase audio share of overall media budget. Well, I would say this, wouldn't I? But actually, there's a very good reason for this. Um, we've demonstrated on how audio is growing in multiple ways this morning and importance for UK listeners of all ages. And it offers a critical mass audiences for advertisers to engage with. But coupled with this... You know, as Matt pointed out this morning, there is a whole host of evidence supporting radio's claim to be effective in delivering results um, across a wide range of metrics found on the Radio Centre website. But there's also very specific data demonstrating the additional effectiveness of upping radio share to the total media budget and what it can do for your overall campaign returns. The, the Radio Centre's ROI multiplier um, study, which was a real game changer when it came in, um, identified that raising uh, radio share uh, of advertising budget leads to a significant increase. And actually, the optimum share that people should be investing in radio is 20% within this data set. Um, um, in this study, we've seen how live radio and on-demand services play complementary roles for the listener. And they can also do that for advertisers. So if you're using radio for brand building or creating future demand, adding on on-demand audio services into the mix can help you know, extend campaign reach significantly, especially among younger audiences. And in the context of converting existing demand or driving short-term response, on-demand audio can enhance targeting efficiencies alongside the activation at scale 
that's provided by radio's reach. But on this point, as these figures from Radar show, if your audio campaign doesn't include radio, then there's no doubt you're limiting your reach and therefore potential effectiveness. So that's about it from me um, today. Thank you so much for listening. Um, the report, as I said, is available outside. There's also some merchandise as well with the artwork, um, uh, should you want to pick up a copy of that. But um, do have a look at it. So thank you so much, and I'll let, uh, let Lawrence come up.